Hello everybody, it's the Mad Haven here today, and we're going to be playing a little, little bit of the type, uh, <laughs> type 5. <laughs> uh, we had some fun with the derp gun yesterday, not today. Uh, today is the IS-5. Um, Object 730 is the uh, other name for it as well. But this is a tank that was buffed, um, actually, it was buffed uh, August 23rd of 2021. And that's almost two years ago. August. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So we're looking at the hatch armor above driver hatch, uh, 60 to 70. Chassis terrain resistance readjustments, which is nice. Terrain readjustments is always a good thing because it's going to make the tank perform a lot better. And then accuracy during movement and rotation from 0.24 to 0.2. So this is turret rotation. Oh, uh, yeah, movement and rotation. So it, they both got readjusted here. That's nice to see. Uh, frontal armor for the turret from 201 to 220. Uh, I'm going to take a look. We got 230, 220 there. The hatches themselves, they said they bumped them up to 70. So let's take a look at this. We got 65, 60, and then 70, huh? Driver oh, driver's hatch. Okay, above the driver's hatch. So they're talking about from 60 to 70. I don't know why you would actually do that because that's 60 is auto ricochet like everything except for Death Stars. I mean, unless you're loading heat, then I guess that actually makes a little bit of a difference there. So right there above the little driver's hatch. That's the uh, 70 that they readjusted from 60. I mean, this is two years ago, so it's been around for quite some time now. Um, they also did a armor on hatches from 102 to 150. This is a decent change because at least tier 8s and tier 7s can still go through this. Even some tier 6s can pin your hatches. Uh, frontal roof armor, which is really nice to see because 30 millimeters, um, anything can overmatch it from uh, 30 to 50. And I mean, we're talking about a real big chunk right there as well. All along that forehead, so 105s, um, yeah, 105s and 100s were overmatching this left and right, and it was a big problem. And having 50 millimeters there makes a real big difference. Makes the turret a lot more reliable. Uh, the best example I can give is like the IS-4 before the buff, where they redid the um, top armor on that, where you had 30 millimeters, and it was just real easy to go against some fronts and head on. Turret rotation from 24 to 26, not exactly a big increase, but it's still appreciated. Uh, rapid aim will make you move a little bit faster, but if you're going to use rapid aim on this, you're also going to want to team it up with snapshot to make your um, turret rotation have a little bit better arm, like better bloom whenever you're zooming around and you're looking around places. Along with that, the gun mental armor from 201 to 230. Accuracy from 0.46 to 0.42, which is a pretty big improvement. And then the biggest improvement overall that this tank saw, 12.6 reload, which was still a really good reload, to 11.5. Accuracy during turret rotation from 0.16 to 0.01. This right here, you know, I think a snapshot actually might be useless because this is the turret rotation. Now I'm confused on what they mean by accuracy, movement, slash rotation. Because movement is like turning the tank left and right, unless they mean left and right rotation being this, which is rotation, which makes no sense. So I, this confuses me because whenever I think of movement and rotation, rotation, in my opinion, is the gun traverse. So whenever you're turning the entire turret, that's rotation. Movement is just any movement at all done by tracks. Movement slash rotation you guys let me know in the comments what you think of that, because this is confusing to me and really, really poor wording, in my opinion. Uh, because accuracy during turret rotation here, again, rotation. This is what I think on rotation, but point, from point 0.16 to point 0.1. So, I don't know, vertical stabilizers might be worth it on this, along with uh, snapshot. That'd be a good combo on this. It would make it stand out quite a bit. So, uh, let's go ahead and jump into this. Uh, object 730, the IS-5. 12,000 gold, $50 right on the dot. 221 standard pin, APCR. I do believe the shell velocity is 1,400. Uh, your premium round is a heat round, and then your high explosive is a 61 millimeters pin. You got 390 and 530. So let's go ahead and start scrolling down right here. We're looking at, yeah, really good statistics, 2,036 damage per minute. I mean, that is due to the reload time here, 11.5 aim time, 3.2, 30 round ammo capacity. Have never run into a problem with that. Uh, turret rotation, they did not include the 0 0.09 there, so yeah, not bad, pretty good. And then accuracy during movement, they we're talking about redoing that as well to 0.2. So over on this, accuracy during movement, 2.79. That does not look like they redid it the way that they said they did. Unless this was intended. But accuracy during movement. 
I swear, we just read that they buffed it. From 0.24 to 0.2. So unless the statistic is different than what I'm thinking it is, I guess I could be wrong. Yeah. Okay. But keep this in mind. 11.5 reload time. Grieve, that's one. 12.3. IS-3 auto. 11.7. Now, remember the IS-3 auto. Keep in mind, the Kree Vets and the IS-3 auto both have 390 alpha across the board. Now, here's the T-54E2. This is a 360 alpha gun, and it matches the IS-3 auto at 11.7. However, it does 30 less damage. It even has less penetration on its premium round, and its premium round is APCR. And in my opinion... APCR premium at 255 is a bit inferior. However, out of all the 360 alpha guns, this is the best performer. Then we have the E75TS, which out of the bat, 13.5 second reload. It is beat by the Kriavets, which has the worst reload with the 390 category that we're looking at right now. And I enjoy my Kriavets. But the E75 is outright beat. Don't get me wrong, accuracy at 0.38. Kriavets... We're looking at an accuracy of 0.45. Thing is, Krivets, the way that this tank has been reworked, it is highly responsive and extremely aggressive. And then, just for the fun of it, a tank that everyone uh, loves to diss on, the Pasante C45. A tank that needs a buff, but never got the buff, even though they did the Italians reforged, I'd say, nine months ago? I could be wrong. It's on my YouTube channel, one of the streams. I'll have to look at that, and then... Uh, come up with it but we're looking at your final shell inside this tank being 17.5 seconds not to mention when you take 22.5 20 and 17.5 that adds up to 60 seconds to load your entire clip and even bolstering this as much as you can it's still going to take you 42 seconds keep in mind that is a guess don't quote me on it 42 seconds as a reference point to fully load a clip you can't swap out and get a freebie round Load it in your first shell without a problem. They'll load in your last two shells like PC can with intuition. So this tank is kind of just in a standstill of literally being one of the worst tanks in the game. And it represents the 360 Alpha Department. Some of the worst. Now, the IS-5, I do enjoy this tank. However, there's a tank that I fill that outmatches this. Real fast, 1400 standard velocity, 820 on the premiums. It's not bad whenever it comes down to shell velocity. It's standard rounds get the job done a lot, especially with that 221 base penetration and the two degrees of readjustment on contact and the fact that it is rocking a 122 millimeter gun. But then we have the Defender, which is also rocking a 122, same caliber, same amount of overmatching, but has 440 alpha. Not to mention the armor on this is a lot better in my opinion. And whenever you look at the Defender, you also have six degrees of gun depression. But whenever you go back to the IS-5, you have five degrees of gun depression. The Kree Vets also has five. The IS-3 Auto also has five. The T-54E2 has 10. The E-75 TS, I want to say, has eight degrees. Eight degrees on the dot. Basante C-45 has got 10 degrees across the board. But honestly, the 360 Alpha guns, these were kind of just a comparison to show off like the difference between 360 Alpha and then compared to the 390s. The 390s clearly outmatch the 360s across the board, except for the T-54E2, which is also a tank that, because it has an autoloader variant of a gun, cannot equip a gun rammer. So it had a better reload to begin with, which means this tank is outright outmatching the E-75TS just in sheer firepower alone, not to mention it also has a freebie equipment slot because it has a built-in gun rammer. Thank you, devs. T5042, strongest tier 8 in the game. And I don't like playing it because it's um, a bit overdone. But the Defender has got 6 degrees of gun depression. Not to mention, its armor model is a lot better with the way that its pike nose is designed. The IS-5 here, one buff that was missed out on and missed opportunity. 7 degrees of gun depression would have made this tank extremely viable in a lot of situations. But it never saw it. So my hope is, hopefully after you know this video gets a little bit of traction, fingers crossed, that they pay a little bit of attention and maybe one day consider giving this tank 7 degrees of gun depression like PC has. Other than that, let's go ahead and dive into some matches here and play this thing live. 
and hopefully you have some better experiences than we did last night because we're not going to be dealing with 121 standard pin and focusing on nothing but overmatch. Not to mention, I hate working swing shift. There is no one in the queue. 43 seconds, found a match. 97 players in queue. It was 37 uh, for a minute there. Taking a minute to load the match. Arctic region. So, another thing is, this tank has got 360 degrees. Well, 360 degrees. Of course, everything is 360 degrees. Um, uh, 360 meters of view range as base view range. Same thing about the Kree event. Same thing about the IS-3 Auto. IS-3 Auto has got 350. T-5042 has got 390. E-75 TS has got 390. Passante C-45 has got 380. And Defender has got 350. Thing is, though, is that this tank with a 9.1 second reload, it does make this thing seem a lot stronger than what I would actually say it is. Um, the gun depression does play against it, and it's just like, the Defender's just a better choice overall. If they were to give this thing 7 degrees, it would make it a lot better. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into the match here. So I'm kind of thinking of heading into the riverfront bed. As I rotate a few things and don't want to be loud. And it is, there is no artillery this match either. There we go. Hello, Holland Hound. The standard round shell velocity. So one thing that I will share with everybody is the faster your round is, the less that disper dis dispersion, so accuracy, your dispersion values, actually affect your gun. Because your shell's traveling so fast, it doesn't have enough time to readjust according to the dispersion value. I mean, don't get me wrong, 0.42 is still 0.42. Still bad accuracy as I dirt my dirt around, but the easy snapshot that we made wasn't really bad. And, you know, we'll aim for the hatch on him. As I'm talking about not super bad accuracy, here I am missing. It's okay, though. With the reload you have, you're able to get some shells out really quick. Ah, oh, the hope. There was none. This is a good match. I'm actually going to go ahead and risk it a little bit. So on this tank, I'm actually not even using a gun rammer and I have a 9.1 second reload. And using a gun rammer on my E75 TS, I believe it's like 9.8. I enjoy my E75 TS a lot. See, if we were to have 7 degrees of gun depression, this would be a decent position for this tank as well. So we got to make some weird wonky play. Take a drop down here. The pike nose does help out because we can kind of make some really um, weird maneuvers. One of them being right here. Let's see if we can pin the hatch with the 221. Here we go, 416. Speaking of which, yesterday inside of the um, the Arachi, did you guys notice whenever I was using the big gun that none of those shells actually mid rolled? They all low rolled. Like I never went past 665 damage. I was re watching that. I was a little bit surprised to see that. There was no mid rolls. There was nothing but low rolls across the board. That one actually. I actually posted a comment on there. If you guys saw it, just go ahead and post underneath that comment in the video. It helps out with the algorithm. <laughs> Alright, so we got IKV, 90B. Oh, yeah, definitely filling that point four two. I mean, it's not bad, but honestly, the biggest thing about this tank is just the gun depression. You've got. So many tanks that just outright outmatch us. And the shell velocity in the standard rounds, that feels so amazing. And then Holland Hound shooting nothing but heat. It's gonna tear right through our frontal armor. You don't need a whole lot of lead with 1400 meters a second rounds though. Stockade. You no, know, yeah, we'll take their base and then pull up on their rear. Down the four rounds left. Not bad, though. 2,200 damage dealt. Definitely more than our health. That's all that matters. Black Prince. I feel like a bully playing inside this tier. Honestly, the um, 122... Uh, yeah, the 122 this gun has, the D25TA, I actually think is a superior version of 122s inside tier 8. Even though it's got really bad accuracy, I don't feel bad whenever I'm going up against tier 10s because of the shell velocity from this gun. 
allows you to take some snapshots and occasionally catch them out. And really bad map design right here. I hate the dragon's teeth. You're kind of forced to go around them or not go over them at all. And two seconds left on cap. This was a fast game. Good game. They jumped off cap. Thank you. And the thing is, is that he's able to ricochet off the hall armor into the turret armor. low part of the turret, I do believe, is still only 30 millimeters thick. So that does play against us a tad bit. Oh, also, for this uh, video, I redid the audio setup. Let me know how you guys think about the game audio now, compared to what it was in the last one. Ah, fired every single one of my premium rounds. Well, <laughs> premium, no, standards. We fired all the standard rounds. 3,109 damage, not a bad go. 4 destroyed, 11 critical hits, 920 block, 2 detections. Uh, made a decent amount of silver there, 102,000. Badge-wise, Fighter, Fire for Effect, Mastery Batch Class 2, Scoreboard, top of the board. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into another game. And here we go. A lineup that I wanted to see. We're up against a couple of Tier 10s here. Uh, Centurion AVRE, hate those things. Two Type 5s, I am just... There's a lot of HE spam inside this match. I actually don't see us winning this one that easily. And I'm inside of a tier 8, which means I'm going to have to really apply myself or lose badly. I mean, there's only so much I can do. 270 heat pin, though, that's enough to get the job done. And with the rate of fire this has, it's real decent. Centurion AVREs, if you guys didn't know, shoot them in the gun mantle. Um, if you, As long as you aim center of the gun mantle on the right side, right side's got more area exposed. You have to aim for the center. If you go too far right, you kind of hit a double layer of space armor. But if you shoot near the center towards the gun, there's not enough armor there. It's only 236 millimeters. Um, and no, you cannot pin it with high explosives. With a HE, it's uh, considered 720 millimeters of armor. You are not going to pin that with uh, AVRE rounds with the premium ones. You, I've already tried it. You bounce. But... So right here, the 42 top speed, I used to run a power terrain on this, but I swapped it out for a toolbox because uh, getting caught out inside this really sucked, and I don't like it. That made me jump. Thank you, turret armor. Really decent turret armor. However, still, extra 2 degrees of gun depression would make this thing absolutely amazing. And give you a reason to play it. But the defender just outmatches this in so many ways. It's kind of like um, wasted potential on a, a buff that they did two years ago. And there, there's so many things that you could have done to this tank to make it absolutely amazing. So let's actually take our 360 view range here and see if we can catch anybody out going across mid. I doubt that anyone's going across it, but there's always, every once in a while, you'll see somebody risking it. Like right here, we're spotted. So there might be a light tank in mid. The chances of that are pretty high. I'm pretty sure that both Type 5s are going to be down here. Yep. Real 15. Type 5s have this uh, little lobe in the left and right side. It's <laughs> really specific and very hard to hit. I don't recommend trying it. But you can, and it has no armor behind it. Spotted and detected, but it wasn't by the Grill 15. Huh. We got a lot of guys are here. 12 to 14 right now. Type 5. Let's go ahead and start loading in the heat rounds. And then we'll see if we can do anything against him. Go for T-54. We're actually going to push up a little bit. Because we want to try and spot out that uh, grill as well if possible. I am loading the heat round. So this is definitely a slower round. It's double type 5 action. Type 4. Real aiming at the batch at 25 ton. Yeah, this is just a really bad uh, position to get stuck into. Here we are. Let's bring you guys back. Oh, I fired into the batch at. That's not healthy. 10 to 14. Not exactly a good go. Oho's in a little bit of a predicament. And Grill 15 took down the batch chat, so... The uh, this is a super risky position to be in because I got the feeling that someone's behind me and I'm about to get set on fire. A low fuel tank. 
Hello, Death Star. Actually, let's see if we can bounce this. Ah! We're not using this match. That's a lot of AVREs. And now I'm just in the garage waiting for the IS-5 to get back. I might play another match, but I don't want to jump in right away because of the uh, three match rule. If you guys don't know what the three match rule is, whenever you go against tier 10s two times in a row, your next match is guaranteed to be either against a couple of tier 9s or a dominant tier of nothing but 8s and everything below you is going to be a lower tier. It's the one of three. So if you guys didn't know about that, now you do. Do with that information what you will. It helps out with stock tank grinding because uh, that third match after you verse two sets of tier 10s is guaranteed to be decent matchmaking. Um, hopefully you guys have some good use for that information. Also, if you want to know how I died, if you already suck, it took two of them to kill me in like three seconds. Hooray for tier eights. And here we are. Prokhorovka. Assault. So a lot of defense. Thing is, you see Prokhorovka with five degrees of gun depression, you can't really do a whole lot in this map. You kind of have to find some really weird positions to get your gun depression. But if you had seven degrees, like the 50 TP, I believe the 50 TP gets seven degrees over the front. and makes it a really good performer because it can use a lot of positions that this tank just can't get into at all. And it makes, it, it's a big difference in the way a tank plays. An extra two degrees of gun depression would completely change the personality. However, whatever comes down to it, the category that this tank's in, the IS-5, I'm not a real big fan of it, because, I mean, you're limited to this. That's not a whole lot to play with at all, especially with the way the tank's designed, how your turret's a little bit more centered out inside the tank. It's a, it's a lot harder to use it. If it was like a full front-mounted turret, 5 degrees doesn't feel too bad, because there's a lot of easy ways to prompt yourself. It's really weird how um, front-mounted turrets uh, play a little bit different with 5 degrees, than center mounted or back mounted turrets. Back mounted turrets of 5 degrees, man, they are rough. And I actually don't know if we have a whole lot of them in the game, but I, I, there might be one. But 5 degrees in a back mounted would be just uncomfortable. Alright, let's get into this. Let's see if we can make a difference here. We are going to play a little bit aggressive. I don't know if we want to hold this position. Might actually just go full left, take the hill up top. Hey, a little bit of spot assist. Providing a little bit of spotting. Nothing crazy. Spotted target hit. Nice. I don't know who I spotted. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, okay. There's not a lot of bots. Alright, they'll be wiped out real soon. I hate versing bots. I think versing bots is like, um... It, you know, that's a subject for uh, another day. Yeah. Subject for another day. Boom, 394, easy snapshot. 1400 shell velocity, you can feel it go. However, you can't feel what you can't shoot in front of you without that 7 degrees of gun depression. A little bit of spot assist. I guess this is a decent position. Go. A little bit of damage being sent out. 59 patent pulling up, and this reload is actually really comfortable. Ooh, if you would have stayed right there, that would have been a land on the hatch. That would have been nice. Um, okay. It's 9 to 10. I might have to make an aggressive play here in a second. I really don't want to. But, what do we got right here? Conquer, he's not even upgraded. We were spotted and detected from that backside there. Or maybe the Gorinch. The entire back flank back there is falling apart. So I'm actually going to go ahead and flip and then head back to help out our TDs. See if there's anything I can do with them. Maybe take the middle position. Provide some assistance by being targeted by artillery. What is the RD? SU-51? I can't remember if the SU-51 has AP or not. I want to say it does, but I could be wrong. Object 416 pushing up. What do we got left? Conquer, TNH, uh, VZ51. You know, let's actually go ahead and load in a heat round real quick. 4 to 10. Let's make a quick pull, put one round into him, and then back off. I guess no rounds. Load back to standards. It's a Conquer. Let's do a quick zoom in here. I cannot see him. 
There's the Gorinch. Put shells into our rear. And I am in a weird situation right here. Let's actually get some trees in between me and my rear. Hopefully that can help. Some trees and bushes. The mighty Bosch! Yes, bushes. Should help a little bit. Shot into a He's shooting heat. Let's go ahead and do a drop. I don't want to get shot in the rear. But I will take on this 416 in the water. Goal is let's get him to drown. No, no gun. Really lost. Conway pulling over. Not exactly the greatest match. Hello! How are you? Oh! The Rem! Okay. Vineyards. This might go better. Um, after dying, I went around and looked around the map. I went and did a replay system. I looked around. Our M103 was stock. Our Conqueror was stocked. And every single tier 9 that the enemy team had were fully upgraded. So, yes. That was uh, fantastic. We had a ton of stock tanks versus fully upgraded tier 9s. So yes, that match fell apart because people just weren't upgraded. M103 played valiantly, he just got one shot off and then got ammo wrecked. So, sorry about that M103. You tried your hardest. Okay, well, let's go use our reload and actually take the city and see if we can get this uh, toolbox to be useful for once. Because apparently today I'm not getting tracked, I'm getting high explosive and heat pinned and rammed by ISUs. And, uh finding myself in really bad positions. But lots of HE. It's not fun where the entire game is turning into HE. This is the season of HE hell, by the way. I don't I don't like if you <laughs> I wonder if you guys agree. It's nothing but HE. It's HE spam season. Worst season ever. Season 17 will go into the history books as a season no one wanted to play. I did want to go into the city, but I didn't see anyone pull over here, so we're going to pull right here until we see people move, and then we'll take it. 439, good high roll. It's sad to think that this thing has got a better reload without a gun rammer than a very large majority of the 360 Alpha tanks. Got a Caliban. What do we got in Oni? 75 TS, Edelweiss. We're going to pull in here. See if there's anything that we can do. I wonder if that Oni's got view on us. I do not know. He does not. E75 TS. We'll pull on you and say hello. We'll bounce. You'll put a shell into our lower plate. We're going to play a little bit different then. Really good reverse side scripper though. IS5 is definitely decent. 377. Four hundred red in the dot. Seem to be going above our average rules with this tank today, rather than yesterday. Inside of the uh, Arachi with nothing but a uh, low rules, no mids. There's a very high chance I did take a very bad position. Going to get shot by Nissan FTS. Let's actually see if we can set an engine fire. MRX, okay. And then Oni up on the rear. So far, not a really good day for matches. Alright, well, I lost by base cap, but that's completely fine. Um, yeah, so I would just say, like, my, my opinion of this tank is it's decent, but compared to, let's say, like, the Krivets 1, keep in mind, Krivets 1 to me is, like, an absolute top-tier tank, and to give you guys an idea, I'll just go down the stats, KD. It is my second most played tank, with 669 matches played. Nice. But, yeah, like, for me, the the gun is amazing, okay? But just the way that the armor's put together, there's tanks out there like the uh, Object 252U, which I think I passed it. Holy crap, I did. What the heck is it left? It is left. Defender. Uh, the 252U. The way the armor model's put together in this, you're looking at Literally 250 on the turret, 240, 230, 220, and then you jump down to the, uh, the armor on the uh, actual hull. You're looking at 130 millimeters of armor. 
And then on the driver's hatch, you got 60 millimeters, which is still good armor. And then you got, uh, what was the armor on that? Is it still 60, or is it actually bumped up to a thicker amount? It is 250 above the driver hatch there. So, even whenever you compare the IS-5 to another tank, uh, to literally the just 252U Defender, this tank has nothing that it offers you in terms of being competitive or it in, in my opinion this tank is actually in a worse state in the game after just how long it's been out and at the age of the tank it's just it it could be better but it's not and i it, it's just it's missed opportunity of what they could have done to actually bring this tank up to par but they never did other than that if you guys have a recommendation for a tank that you would like me to do this with play it live and go over like a couple of other tanks compared to them um, if no one says anything, I'll just choose a random one and go from there. Uh, more than likely, the random one will be something really overpowered next, if no one gives me a suggestion. Other than that, you guys have a great night, afternoon, um, whatever time it is for you. For me, it's late. It is, uh, 12.36 a.m., and I'm normally in bed in, like, 25 minutes, so. You guys, it's been fun. Matchmaking tonight sucked. Don't play late night. I hate swing shift because of the matchmaking late night. Yeah, it's primarily dominant tier 10s. And if you're not playing a 10, then you're just uh, not doing a whole lot. And you have to rely on the uh, three match rule to do anything. So you have to play your really strong tier 8s for two matches. And then you play the one that you're working on the third round. And you just have your fingers crossed that it goes well. Other than that, I'm out of here. Thank you for... Uh, I don't know, spending the whole time with me and hearing me monologue and hopefully you guys agree with the, you know, the buff I'd say. Literally just one thing. One thing. Seven degrees again the pressure. Problem solved. Still, the Urachi makes me angry. It didn't go above 665 even though its base damage is 700. That was irritating as all heck.